there has been something very special going on in Dallas this week. If you are in the spirit, and you are the spirit-filled church, there's been a fluctuation in the spirit. You may not know what it was. 2,500 of us came from 77 countries and for the last four days, we've been in the streets every day, sharing Jesus. Gave out a few copies of God's Word, but our primary way we experience kingdom expansion is by witnessing. Enrique came to fix the air conditioner in one of our meeting rooms in the Gaylord Texan and he thought he was going to go to heaven because he was so good. A few minutes later, he didn't think he was so good. I believe we're going to see Enrique in heaven. Our waitress at uh, Papa Do's, Alicia, raised Catholic when asked if she was going to heaven. I don't know. That's a good question. Alicia knows now. Alicia's going to be in glory. You will meet her one day. And she may come up and say, you know, that man from Florida told you about me. <clears throat> it's a privilege to sit on the front row of kingdom expansion. But might I say, church, church, hear me now. That shouldn't just be an event that happens one week every seven or eight years in the greater Dallas Metroplex. Here's some really good news. There are hundreds of people from this Metroplex coming to church this morning, many for the first time in a long time, and many for the first time ever. Because what do we do? We go out and we compel them to come in. And you are who make that happen. You know, Gideons, quite simply, are a few of the men of the church and their wives. We cannot do this ministry without our wives, who take a little bit of the money of the church, and we take the message of the church to a lost and dying world. And folks, <laughs> I don't need to tell you how the cultural decay is just really happening at a pace and, and prophecy is being realized at an ever-increasing pace. Jesus is coming. Make no mistake. I want him to tally. There are too many who have not come to him. You know, the Bible says that you did not choose me, but I chose you. However, what I find is the more people that I actually share Scripture with, they were chosen. They just didn't know it. That's our job. That's your job. It's not the pastor's job. It's not the Gideon's job. It's all y'all's job, right? I used to live in Texas, so I can say all y'all. <laughs> Folks, do you think it's important that when people visit Fort Worth, Fort Worth, there's a copy of God's Word in their hotel room? Do you think it's important that copies of God's Word are in our Jails and prisons here? How about our crisis pregnancy centers and domestic abuse centers? Do you think it's important that we give scriptures into the hands of our brave military? Well, Lance Corporal Jason E. Smith probably never heard the shot that killed him. He never heard it. His parents said that he'd become quite rebellious in his last few years before he joined the army. And when he shipped off, he received a little New Testament. We make those in the same color camouflage as their uniform. And he began to read from that scripture, and he met the Christ. And he was baptized in a sandy hole in the desert by his military chaplain. Just a few short days before his death, he was heard sharing his newfound faith with his platoon mates. Now... How do you console the parents of one so young, right? 
but at least they know where their son is going to spend eternity. Amen? All right. Now, that was the congregational participation element of my presentation. And I have to tell you, you all failed miserably, okay? So, I want to ask you a question. Do you feel the power of God's Word? That's much better. Andrew, I'm going to get them warmed up for you, brother. Organized in over 200 countries, territories, and possessions, Gideons around the world are distributing scriptures in over 100 languages at a rate of two and a half every time your heart beats. Gideons distribute to motels, hotels, hospitals, nursing homes, police, fire, EMT, schools, colleges, you name it. So what, what can you do? Well, the most important thing you can do the most powerful presence in the history of mankind, the living word of God, you pray it. You pray it over the Gideons. Pray that we would have the resources to meet the overwhelming demand for God's word around the world. Just recently, the Sudan was open to the Gideons. We have camps in Pakistan, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Nigeria, the Republic of Congo. In fact, the most recent World Watch list issued by Open Doors said that Gideons are placing God's word and witnessing in 32 of the most persecuted countries in the world. 32 of the top 50 most persecuted countries in the world. You see, the hunger for God's word in these countries is hard for me to express in words. Pray that the word will transform those nations. But hear me now. Pray that the word will transform this nation. You see, we live in a nation that's become the third largest mission field in the world. We live in a nation that needs Jesus. That's the only answer. David Bray was in prison for murder when he found salvation through a Gideon Testament that was recycled out of a hotel room we take the covers off put a soft cover on them and then we put them in there so they can't hurt themselves he's now a chaplain in the new york state penal system i had the privilege to work shoulder to shoulder on the streets of new york city chinatown with reverend bray as we distributed 1750 christian chinese bibles in about four hours mary Kay beard was a notorious bank robber she was sentenced to life in prison when she was gloriously saved from having read from a Bible that she found in her solitary confinement. Now, there's not supposed to be a Bible in solitary confinement. She read in Ezekiel how God promised to remove a heart of stone and replace it with the heart of flesh. She went on to start the angel tree ministry. I could go on and on. I could go on and on. Things I've seen, it's a privilege to represent the word of God. Here's the good news. We have no power. We don't. Jesus, it's the word of God, the living word of God. And folks, it's alive. Something happens when you ask people to read scripture. It goes through their eyes. It goes through their brain. And it comes out their mouth. And they get it. We do that. And we go for you where the church might not be able to go. It is a privilege to serve you. You make that happen. Pastor will talk a minute how you might be able to help. I want to tell you one other thing. We have just distributed one million scriptures in Ukraine. We have distributed this past year in the Dallas Metroplex 146,843 copies of God's Word. Thank you for allowing me to join you for worship this morning. And may God continue to richly bless the church family that calls itself Convergence.